Welcome to Achieve Wealth through Value Add Real Estate Investing. This is the show where the guru hype is banned and you get direct insights from commercial real estate operators. If you're a passive investor, this show can help you better understand investment opportunities. And if you're an active investor, the lessons from each episode can help you to become more effective in your own deals. Now, here's your host, investor and author, James Kandasamy. My name is Steve Sabaji. I'm uh, with Quest Trust Company, an IRA specialist with Quest. And my background really is kind of on the more traditional pension side. I uh, worked a lot with defined benefit and defined contribution plans and really kind of dealt with financial planning and traditional types of investments that you see, you know, through a 401k and that kind of thing. So my coming over to Quest was, you know, something I saw as a great opportunity because I really was excited to get into this self-directed part of the retirement plan business. I think that this is where, you know, there's a lot of potential for growth. I think a lot of people are really kind of now migrating toward um, alternative assets. And, you know, I think that, you know, we are uniquely positioned to help really build on those needs. Now, um, one thing that I do want to emphasize here, um, I'm not, I don't want this to come off as a Quest sales pitch. You know, there are some things I'm going to talk about Quest with. Specifically toward the end, I am going to talk about the Quest process uh, as it comes to doing syndication deals. Um, and that's, that's really just pretty much going to be a single slide because really what I think I have to do prior to talking about that is kind of set up what a self-directed IRA is and who you can and can't work with and those kinds of important things prior to actually getting into an investment itself. So Quest itself, we are the largest self-directed IRA custodian here in the state of Texas. We are one of the largest in the country. We currently have in the neighborhood of 20,000 active clients with us at this time, and it is a nationwide clientele. Currently, we have over $2 billion under uh, administration. And right now, uh, we are a very good place to look at if you are looking to fund deals. Right now, our clients are sitting on about $400 million in uninvested cash. So, you know, whenever you're looking for a deal, a lot of these self-directed IRAs can be a very good source. And again, not just Quest. Um, you know, there are people that are looking to make deals uh, and retirement plans, as I'm sure you're all aware, is where a lot of the money is right now. And again, people are looking for new ways to invest their money and this affords them that opportunity. And again, just like Carrie kind of did a few minutes ago, I do want to just, uh, you know, kind of make the disclaimer that uh, this is purely for educational purposes. Any kinds of investments that you go into, uh, you do want to consult with your tax, legal, or investment advisor before doing so. All right, so the self-directed IRA, let me just basically start with what that is. First of all, a self-directed IRA is, in short, where an individual really gets to choose what it is they're investing in. Now, in point of fact, there's really no distinction between a self-directed IRA and an IRA anywhere else. In fact, in a manner of speaking, every IRA is self-directed because with an IRA, you get to choose what you invest in. Now, the reason we make a distinction with the self-directed IRA is that what you are getting to choose is the actual investment that you're putting your money in. You know, if you go to a Fidelity or a Vanguard, you're buying their products that are managed by their people. So you don't really have a say in terms of what they buy and put into their portfolio. Here, you choose the asset. You go out and find your deal, whatever it may be, whatever kind of asset class it is, but you truly get to pick your own deal. So the benefits become 
very simply that there's greater diversification. When I was in the pension field and helping clients review uh, portfolios, one thing that I always try to emphasize to people is when you're dealing with the investments, no matter how diversified you think you are, you're not that diversified. I can think of a client that I had many years ago, and I was looking at his overall portfolio, which consisted of a lot of different mutual funds, individual stocks, all those kinds of things. I was able to show him across the board that Apple was a huge component of everything he had. He had three specific funds. I think one was an index, one was a large cap stock, one was a tech fund, and Apple was the biggest holding in all of them. And on top of that, he owned Apple stock. The fact is, is that there are only about 3,000 publicly traded companies. There are over 13,000 mutual funds, ETFs. So you have more of those big baskets of investments chasing fewer securities. You're going to find overlap. Now here with the self-directed IRA, again, you truly have the ability to invest in something that isn't available for public sale, be it a piece of real estate, be it a syndication, be it private lending. So you really are getting something different from what you would get through traditional investments, which does give you greater diversification. And on top of that, these are assets that don't really correlate to the stock market, which again is truly what you want when you are looking for overall greater diversification. Tax savings is a part of it as well. You know, with the tax savings, you know, it all depends on the type of IRA that you're utilizing. If we're using a traditional or a rollover, we have the benefits of the tax deferral, the sheltering of the taxes in the here and the now, something like a Roth. You know, we know we're using after-tax money, but we can get all of that money back tax-free down the road. So clearly some savings there. Social investing, I think, is an interesting element that also exists when you're looking at using a self-directed IRA. Think of it like this. Let's say you buy that property in a neighborhood. It's a complete eyesore. Well, you buy it. Your intention is to fix it up and repair it, make it something where somebody wants to live. What goes into it, though? You're injecting a lot of capital into that. It starts with materials, which you are sourcing locally. It starts with labor, which you are sourcing locally. So it becomes a case of where by utilizing investments in a self-directed IRA, you can really help out the local economy. I like to think in a lot of ways, you can do good for yourself and you're doing good for your community as a whole. And lastly, you get to invest in the things you know better than anything. One of the true virtues of the self-directed IRA is, again, you choose the asset. You've done the due diligence. You've figured out everything there is to know about that asset. As a result of that, along with the tax savings, the diversification, you potentially can be a lot less surprised by the outcome of your own investment because of the fact that you're investing in something that you know so well. Now, again, just a quick primer. Um, there are a variety of different types of accounts that are available for use and self-directing. So again, it starts with the personal types of plans. That would be the traditional IRA. That would be the Roth IRA. Traditional, just in point of fact as well, is known as a rollover IRA. So any money that's pre-tax, uh, that you've had in those 401ks or 403bs, all of that would go over and be governed under the rules of a traditional. One thing I'm seeing more and more of now, of course, is that people are using the Roth components to their retirement plans, and those funds certainly can go directly into the Roth IRA. So we're seeing, seeing that as a trend coming forward now. <clears throat> there are a couple of different versions if you are self-employed and don't have your own 401k plan that you can also utilize. Things like 
the SEP IRA, the simple IRA, the solo 401k. Each of them have a lot of distinct advantages. So if you want to learn more about those, let's have a conversation. We can kind of walk you through all of them, what they do, you know, how much their limits are. The limits in these plans are significantly higher than the personal types of IRAs. And then we have certain specialty plans, we call them. They're not IRAs technically, but they have a lot of similar characteristics. One thing that's unique about them is that they are for specific purposes. So we have the health savings account. That's the greatest thing on earth. That is the only thing that is truly triple tax free. Deductible contributions, deferred while the money is in there, and it is tax free on distribution if it goes for qualified medical expenses. And that is a very broad term. You know, people think of it maybe as, you know, a doctor's visit or an eye exam, but it's, you know, acupuncture, it's chiropractic, it's even, you know, for a seeing eye dog, if that should be something that you need or somebody needs. And then finally, there's the Coverdale education savings. Again, tax-free distributions for the specific person of qualified education expenses. But again, there it has a very broad definition. It's not just tuition or books. You know, it could be school uniforms. Even in this day and age, they're allowing for things like Wi-Fi because of the situation people have found themselves in with having to do homeschooling through the COVID epidemic. So again, very essential and helpful tools that can provide tax-free income. All right. So as, as I'm getting closer to talking about investing, there is one thing that I do want to make a, a strong point about. Any of the types of accounts I just talked about can be combined together to use for a single investment. So that means you can partner your IRAs. You know, if you and your spouse have IRAs, you can combine those and put them toward an investment. You can partner with an ESA or an HSA and an IRA. So all the types of accounts that we're talking about can be used together. Now, the titling is what the issue can be. The distribution of any earnings or the distribution of an expense has to be divided based on the proportions of the ownership of the various types of accounts. But again, you know, I see people all the time, they want to partner up, you know, they can even partner with themselves on an after-tax basis. So again, there, there's no shortages to ways in which this can be used with other capital that you have and other accounts that you have. All right, very quickly, I want to talk about just some of the restrictions before I get into more of the utilization, because there are some important rules in terms of who you can and can't do business with, types of transactions and investments that you can and cannot use. On the people side, there are what they call disqualified people. That is basically you and your spouse, ascendants and descendants and their spouses, and any kind of entity that any of them would own, control, operate, or be highly compensated by. So this is really important, especially as it pertains to syndications. Because again, remember, a lot of people want to partner. If you're utilizing your self-directed IRA, and this is getting into the transaction restrictions, it means that you can't personally manage the entity itself, be it a partnership, be it an LLC, a trust. You really have to be a passive investor if you are using your self-directed IRA. Also, in terms of the transaction restrictions, uh, you can't basically self-deal. You know, you can't buy, trade, lend money to yourself, any of those kinds of things the IRS will restrict. And then finally, there are types of investments that you can't use. Now, it's only limited in this case to life insurance and collectibles. Life insurance, it has its own tax benefits. It wouldn't really necessarily be something you would put into an IRA. Collectibles, that they define as something you really can't affix a value to, a hard value to. So it's things like artwork, antiques, you know, wine, 
any of those kinds of things where, you know, the value could be this, it could be that, you know, it's really based more on what somebody might pay for it, as opposed to, you know, something that you is tangible and you can, you know, basically put your money into. Now, in terms of what you can do, let's always talk about that. Um, on the real estate side, it can be hard real estate in the sense of a property. And again, that can be a fix and flip. That can be a uh, rental property. Airbnbs are becoming more and more popular that people are using through their self-directed IRAs. The entity side, this is what a lot of you are really interested in. So it can be any kind of entity. Like I said, an LLC, it can be a C-Corp, it can be you know, a trust, any kind of those, of those types of entities are what you can utilize. And again, a lot of great advantages to doing it by way of a partnership, as opposed to owning the asset directly in the entitling it in the name of the IRA. And then there's a great deal of people who will do lending. Again, you can be lending to about anyone, again, as long as they're not a disqualified person. Nice thing I like about lending too, is you really get to negotiate the terms. So as the lender, it's your prerogative to set and negotiate those terms with the potential borrower. So again, can really be a popular way to go. And just, I'm gonna add, again, not meant to be a, an advertisement for Quest, but we are about to get into cryptocurrency as well. So that is something that will be offered through our organization, a platform in which to trade it coming by the end of the quarter. And again, that's a, another popular option. Many other self-directed IRA custodians do it and we'll be joining their ranks. All right, now that I've laid all that out as the groundwork, let's talk about exactly how you go about executing a transaction. No surprise. Obviously, step number one, you have to have your self-directed IRA. So whether you've already got one in existence or whether you're new to this, first step is have the account, open the account. Next step is that we got to get money in it. Money can come from a variety of different sources. Money could be transferring existing IRAs. Money could be coming from a previous employer 401k plan or 403b, any kind of retirement account that's eligible to be taken and rolled over. There are certain types of retirement plans that they're, they're what they call non-qualified plans. So they don't let you actually roll those monies over. But if you ever have any question, you know, you can certainly ask us, we can answer to the best of our ability, but it would really be your benefits people who can tell you the most definitive answer. But again, I'd say most of the plans I see are qualified and therefore eligible to roll over. Finally, you know, there's personal contributions. And like we were saying a few minutes ago on a personal IRA, you know, that's, that's not terribly much. But with those special accounts we were talking about, like the SEP, the Simple, the Solo K plan, you can really put a lot more in there. And again, let's remember, we can partner. So we can set up a Roth IRA. We can set up a SEP IRA. You know, we can do conversions from one to the other if we want to consolidate. There are a lot of ways we can go and get those balances up much more or just partner all together and meet whatever criteria we have for investing. So once the account's funded, now it's up to you to find that investment. And again, whether it's a piece of property, whether it's a investment opportunity through a multifamily syndication, or again, the lending, it's completely at your discretion. And again, these partnerships, they're getting more and more popular. I'm seeing a great deal of them. And you know, they seem to work very well. They're great passive investments for people. You know, it's about a what? would you guys say three, five year commitment to, of your capital and then basically comes right back. And again, then you're ready to find your own deal again. Once you found the investment, it's time to initiate the investment. Now, 
this is a little old, this is a little outdated. It says complete your investment forms. Um, again, here at Quest, we've launched a fully functional client portal, which will now let you do a lot of that online. It's actually taken away the need for a great many of those forms. You just basically do that online through the portal. The only other thing that we really need is that we need the supporting documentations. So there's gonna be things like the subscription agreement, the JV agreement, or whatever your entity is. So just the supporting documentation that we need that says, I'm purchasing X, I, I'm getting Y, and these are the people who are in charge. And you know, basically just that kind of concrete information. Finally, once that's all in order and been read and approved, we go ahead and we execute the transaction. And then the investment is titled in your IRA and it's time for you to just sit back and reap the rewards.